This video is brought to you by Miniature Market. Thousands of board games, discounted prices, miniaturemarket.com. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. A couple weeks ago I went to the Gamma Trade Show and this is an industry only event in Las Vegas where retailers, distributors, and publishers all get together for different reasons. The, the, the retailers are learning how to, how, they, they go through seminars and classes as how to make their game stores better, how to learn the ropes of the business, and the distributors are out walking around trying to help both the retailers and the publishers come together to, to do some POs and buy, buy games that are gonna be coming out this year. And the publisher there's are there to let people know about the different games that they're coming out with. The publishers also have these things where they actually press events where they release the different things that are coming out and there's two days of an ex exhibition hall. Now last week I showed you a video of all the different things, the sights and sounds of the, the exhibit hall and all the different cool things that were there. In this series of videos I'm going to be going through about 50 games that really excited me that's coming out later this year since this is really the kickoff of the 2017 game season. And so I'm going to be going through a series of videos going through A through Z through the publishers that were at Gamma that I spoke to and have games that I'm excited about. And we're gonna start with these, starting with A, and we'll do about 10 to 12 to 15 games each video. So it's gonna be going on for a few weeks to let you know uh, all the things that I'm excited about. So let's get started. Now to kick this off, let's start with AEG. Everyone knows Love Letter, right? A very popular micro game. It sort of started the entire micro game craziness. Uh, so what made it really popular over the last few years, and we've seen them reskin Love Letter in many different ways with Munchkin and Batman and all different alternate art. And a lot of those maybe had a tiny bit of rule tweaks, but most of them were exactly the same. Now this new version of Love Letter is called Lovecraft Love Letter, and it's basically a Cthulhu themed version of this, but this one actually has some different mechanisms about it. Uh, that's why I'm excited because I do really love Love Letter. I like how it's simple, it's easy to teach, yet there's a lot of, you know, a decent amount of depth. There's some deduction there, and there's it's something you could play pretty casually, but you could play it pretty seriously while paying attention. Now with this version, different ways to, to play the game actually, because some of the cards, many of the cards actually don't just have the, the same number and the same action as the, as the original Love Letter, but they also have, uh, you know, these these cards, the madness cards, basically they have the same number as before, but in addition to the normal action, there's a special action you're able to take. But when it comes back to your turn, you have to be able to draw off the pile as many uh, cards as you have madness cards in front of you. And if another madness card comes up, you're out of the round. So it's very risky. It's a press your luck element. But if you're able to get past that and not get knocked out, you can use the very powerful abilities on these cards. Also, depending on whether you win the game normally or with the, the madness tokens, there's different amount of tokens you need to get to to win it one way or other. So there's two different strategies. You can go normal or you can try to press your luck for the madness and there's different amounts of tokens you need to win to win the game. So I like that they're changing the differences and, and adding some mechanisms here for Lovecraft Love Letter. The next one is called Unicornus Knights. Now, this is a fully cooperative game, and this is uh, part of their Big in Japan series. They're starting to bring over a bunch of games in this quote-unquote Big in Japan series. So games that are huge in Japan, Big in Japan, or have a lot of Japanese designers, they're bringing them over to the United States. Now, this one is designed by Seiji Kanai, same person that did Love Letter, and a popular designer also called Kuro. Uh, and this is a fully cooperative game, and it takes 60 to 90 minutes, and essentially... Uh, basically you have this princess that is going to be predeterminedly moving in a certain area all around the kingdom and they're going to get to the emperor and you're trying to help her get to the emperor but be able to take over the emperor when you get there and so there's all these different things that come out. There's different interactions with different players that are on the board, sort of like non-playing characters. There's fate cards that come out. And sometimes you'll have to be friends with, with some of the people and they'll come with you and actually help you. But you're cooperatively trying to get there around different things, through different things, fighting through different uh, combat. And you're trying to get her there alive and you're trying to get her to succeed to take over the emperor. She will get there, but can you get her there in the right amount of time? And can you get her there to defeat it? And it seems like an interesting thing where you're, it's cooperative, but, but it still has that twist of you're trying to get her to the certain spot and there's different things that happen there. So I, I just think it looks cool. The artwork looks cool. And this is just an interesting idea there. 
The next one from AEG is The Captain is Dead. This is another fully cooperative game, up to seven players. Again, takes about 60 to 90 minutes to play. Uh, and this is one that is on a space station. And there's a few different things. You're trying basically to get the ship, in, the, the ship systems back up and working, basically called the Jump Core. Uh, but there's a lot of different things going to be happening. There's a, there's a hostile alien ship trying to destroy you. Um, you know, you're trying to balance your time between keeping the ship's systems online and fending off alien threat and completing your objective. Now, uh, I got a chance to watch people playing this at the game night that they, that they had at Gamma. And one of the things I kept hearing over and over about this game is, is yeah, from the surface it looks like a cool idea. Everyone likes it, you know, being a space station. Uh, but what everyone was telling me, as I was sitting next to them, I was playing a different game actually, sitting next to them, and this is not a storytelling sort of uh, game, but the stories that come out of these games and the things that happen where, hey, you know, there's an alien in my, in my place. I, I need to run over there, but I can't because I got to shoot all these aliens first or something bad happens to me. It's like, oh, I got to run over there, but I can only go one time, every uh, one move every Every time and so all these different funny things are sort of happening and people are laughing and they're sort of telling stories about the funny things that happen to them during the game and that seems to be this is more of a, like an experience game than anything else now the last one I'll mention from AEG is Custom Heroes. Now back last year, uh, they came out with a popular game called Mystic Veil. Vale. This was a card crafting game. And in this game, essentially they had these little sleeves. The game came with its own sleeves. And there were these clear sort of plastic cards that you would overlay onto the normal cards. And you could put more than one and you could basically really power up certain cards. And it was a deck builder and it was a cool idea. And we knew they were probably going to be using this engine in many other games. Well, here's the next one that's going to have it. Now this game is essentially is sort of not a trick taking game but sort of like a climbing or a ladder climbing type of game where somebody might be throwing some cards down like you throw down a two and the next player has to either equal that or beat it but if someone starts with like three fives then so the next player has to play three fives or three something higher than that but the cool thing is that each player starts with some power-ups and you can sleeve some of the heroes that are there and they start to get customized some of them will get weapons that make them stronger some of them like throw cabbage and tomatoes and get less numbers so you, you're basically either using those cards for special abilities or you're using those cards to power them up. Now, these cards can also have up to four different upgrades on them. And sometimes, you know, you're messing with them using a special power. You're, you're messing, manipulating with numbers, trying to defeat uh, or to get better than other players. And you're trying to basically just go out. And the faster you go out, the more points you get. And then once you get a certain amount of points, 10, uh, you're trying to be the one to go out first then. And it's just... I, th I think it's an awesome idea. I love card games in general that are like this, these climbing games. Uh, but you put the card crafting in here, and the coolest part is when you craft the card and you use that next round, all of them get shuffled up and everyone gets them divvied out. So you might be making a really cool, powerful character, but it's probably going to be in someone else's hands next round. And you got to remember what people have kind of done. You know what's coming up. Really cool idea here, and this is one I really liked. The next publisher we'll talk about is called Baksha Games, and they, uh, first of all, they last year, a couple years ago, came out with a very popular worker placement game called uh, What's He Building in There? It's a game I still actually have in my library. Uh, it is a super tight worker placement game, and the theme basically is, what's he building in there? Basically, you're an evil doctor, and you have a doomsday device and an escape plan, and you're trying to get different resources and then refining them, but there's different social tracks that can go down. You're getting, uh, you know, like, uh, there's security, there's different pet, exotic pets you can get, uh, you've got to basically get a big castle, uh, but there's also different inventions that you have to make in order to create these doomsday devices and such. And once you have those, uh, those inventions done, if somebody else makes the invention, you get money for that to get paid for the patent royalties. Some really cool mechanisms there, and I love the theme. It's super tight. It's tighter than I typically like in a Euro game. But the theme comes through so strongly that I really like this game a lot. And it's been sold out. So the big news here is that they're doing a reprint. They're bringing this back uh, later this year, I think around September-ish. And they've also streamlined uh, some of the things. They've made some of the cards a little bit different size, made them easier to work. Uh, they've also... Uh, change some of the iconography that was a little bit confusing in the first edition. They're also building up an expansion in the box that's going to have more doomsday devices and more escape plans. So for those of you that had wanted to get your hands on this, this is going to be coming out later this year. You'll finally get to do it. And for those of you that have not played it or even heard of this, put this on your radar because this is an excellent, super tight Euro worker placement game from Baxter Games. 
The other one they're coming out with is a while back, uh, I think 10 years ago, they came out with a game, I think it was his first game, it was called Good Help. Uh, and this is a ga another game about being an evil doctor. Uh, I mean, essentially, you got your evil doctor degree, and you're trying to make a monster that you want to turn out on everyone that's made fun of you throughout your whole life. Uh, and, and you're trying to basically have your, your, your monster destroy five buildings, but you can also destroy each other's monsters. Now, the original game, well, it was his first one, so uh, it was a little bit lengthy. And this is basically a card game version of this, which has streamlined a lot of mechanisms, made it a lot faster. It's going to play in about 60 to 75 minutes. So it's faster. It's streamlined. He's learned a lot of, about design over the last 10 years. Kind of like similar to, you know, last year, you know, uh, a different company, Cheap Ass Games, came out with Kill Dr. Lucky, the 30th uh, or the 20th or some, some anniversary edition, and they had streamlined a lot of the mechanisms out. They had also even made a card game version of that that streamlined it out. And I'm hoping that, that Sean from Backstreet Games does the same thing here, where it's, hey, it's, 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 it takes an older game with a cool concept, a cool theme, and figured out a way to make it more modern in today's world by streamlining out mechanics, and that's coming out this later this year too. Now on to Bezier Games. Uh, they had a game there called Werewords, and this is a mix of like werewolf and 20 questions. And in this game, uh, one player is going to be basically the person, the, the, the mayor, they're gonna know what this word is. The word might just be something simple like eggs. And uh, they'll get to see the word. Somebody else will get to see the word called the, the, the seer, and basically they are trying to get everybody to get this question right without having, without being obvious. So they're trying to nonchalantly point these questions. And when, when time starts, you're, they'll be asking questions like, is it a living thing? Yes. Is it, uh, is it bigger than a house? No. Is it bigger than a car? No. Is it edible? Yes. And so the one person that knows is answering all these questions, yes or no. And everyone else is firing off these questions. And as they get these questions answered, the, the mayor's giving out tokens, whether they got it right or wrong, like whether, whether the question was a yes or or no. So at the end of the round, you can see who asked the most questions, were they mostly right, were they mostly wrong, there's some data out there. But there's also a werewolf. The werewolf is trying to get the team to not get it right in the four minutes that it takes to play the game. And so the werewolf's trying to throw them off. Well, at the end, if they got it right, the werewolf try, gets to try to guess who the seer is, who actually knew. And if they're right, well, the werewolf wins alone. Otherwise, uh, you know, the, if, if, the, if the werewolf, if the team doesn't get to do it, then people get to guess who the werewolf is and try to win at the last moment. Now, this is very similar to a game called Insider that I reviewed last year that I absolutely loved. It's similar, yet it's very different at the same time because you've got the token aspect. Uh, you also have, uh, you can have multiple werewolves with more players, with actually more roles with more players. There's a minion, and he acts similar to the minion in One Night Ultimate Werewolf. So if you like 20 questions, if you like party games, you like werewolf social deduction, definitely one to check out. Next is a Palace of Mad King Ludwig. Now, a few years ago, actually, I was at Gamma when they announced the Castles of Mad King Ludwig, and it came out that year in Essen. Uh, and this was a super, this is a very popular game where people are building their castles up, and you're getting different bonuses for different types of rooms and adjacencies, and you're building up your castles, you're trying to close rooms. And there's this, there was this cool master builder mechanism. Well, this is sort of a sequel to that. It's a standalone game. This is not an expansion. And in this game, Everyone is building the, ca the palace, but it's one big palace. See, in Castles of Mad King Ludwig, everybody had their own castle. In palaces, everyone's building one big palace, but there's different colored rooms that you're trying to score and finish, and they have different colors on the different, you know, uh, in the entrances and exits of these rooms, and you're trying to be able to close rooms by getting bonuses yourself. Uh, so it's it's like a twist for that, for, for, for from the original sort of Castles of Mad King Ludwig. If you've liked that theme and you like that, you're definitely going to want to check this one out because it's, again, somewhat similar, but yet at the same time, a very different game, and that's going to be one you're going to want to check out. The next one is called Whistle Stop, and now this is going to be sort of their family weight game this year. Uh, it's about trains. It's a pick up and deliver game. Now, I'm not typically really big on pick up and deliver, but this one had some interesting twists, which makes me interesting to it. First of all, it plays about two to five players. It takes about 75 minutes to play. And you're gonna, be, you're gonna be building routes across the west of the United States, and you're basically gonna be building your railroad company as you do it. You're gonna be picking up cargo and delivering it, but also you're gonna be creating a network of railways, and when you pick up things, you can either drop them off for, for, for immediate things uh, and get shares in railroads, and anytime you talk about shares, uh, you know, this adds basically sort of a stock set collection share type of uh, mechanism in the pickup and deliver. That's what makes this, this game interesting to me because, again, I don't typically like pickup and deliver, but you add an economic element, a set collection share element, I'm going to be totally into this. So you can either sell things like that right off, you know, 
uh, as you get it and as you deliver it, or you could try to save them for later for end game bonus points. So it seems like uh, it's got some interesting things, some different twists, I'd say, to, to normal pick them and deliver games. And they say basically it's gonna be like their family weight game where it's easy, it's accessible for casual gamers, uh, but it's gonna be still good for the gamer enthusiasts like us. And the last one for this first video of the Gamma uh, games that are coming out for the rest of the year is One Night Ultimate Alien. This was sort of on Kickstarter last year. Now, One Night Ultimate Werewolf was a huge success. It's one of my favorite social deduction games. They had a sequel that could be played with it or by itself. This is, and then they had One Night Ultimate Vampire, which again was a sequel that could be played by itself or mixed together. And this is the last one, the, the most recent one, One Night Ultimate Alien. Uh, and so all of these sets can either be played by themselves or mixed together with all the other sets. And it does come with an app like all the other ones. And the, the, the big twist with this one is that even if you were to get the same role two games in a row, many times that what that role does specifically will change. It will, it'll, it'll point to somebody else or do something slightly different where the role does sort of one major thing, but it's slightly shifted or slightly changed on what exactly you're doing with that role. So the roles change a little bit with each game. So no two games will exactly play sort of the same. And I think that's a really cool twist. I've talked to some of the people that have played this during his play testing and most of them have said, if not all, that this is their favorite iteration of this series because of that. So if you like social deduction games and you like the One Night Ultimate Werewolf series, this is definitely gonna want one you're gonna wanna check out and that's coming out later this year as well. All right, well, that's the first of, I believe, five of these videos we're going to be doing going A through Z, the publishers that I talk to, the ones that I'm excited about and telling you why, just to give you some insight as to what's coming down the road, things to be thinking about. What I like to do is when I see a game that I'm excited about or hear about, I go to boardgamegeek.com, I find the page, and then I hit the little subscribe button, and then anytime you know threads or things get updated there, you'll get a little ping on Geek Mail and Board Game Geek. It allows you to keep in touch with what's going on with the games that you're excited about. Until next time, we'll see you. Uh, we're going to start video two on the next iteration of this pretty soon. This video was sponsored by Miniature Markets Review Corner. The Review Corner features podcasts, video, and written game reviews by gamers for gamers. Miniature Market, the online gaming superstore. Thousands of board games, discounted prices. Check them out at miniaturemarket.com.